Hey there, Chief Dennis Farina here, and welcome to JSYK with Dennis Farina. Just so you know, I'll be talking for most of this. Oh, uh, I don't think so. This is the Cage Man, the Cage Man on Cage, Uncaged podcast with your main caster, Nicholas Freaking Cage. Now, now I gotta wonder, and I'm sure you do too. How this midge named Nicholas Cage thinks he can be uncaged. Who is this midge you're talking about? It's the Cage Man. How do you not know this? Oh, oh yeah. actually, guys, it's right. uh, our podcast. It's a uh, D podcast. That's with right. Your main bros slamming skits. Well then, uh, just so you know, I'll be leaving for most of this. Not D's podcasters. <laughs> Douglas, thank you for laughing. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, it's time for the new and improved D podcast with Simon Skits. That's right. We've changed things up a bit, and we're making it more entertaining. Heck Wouldn't you yeah, agree? Uh, yeah, I would believe so. Hey, All right. Skits, how yeah. have you been? Man, I've been amazing. I've been making lots of money at work. Uh, got a steady snapchat streak with a attractive girl who i will Whoa, leave anonymous for now omg yeah i mean it's not like it means a whole lot but I, hey I, I can't believe it you actually have a snap streak with a girl it's, it's amazing oh really uh, you, yeah. you have one i mean i deleted my snapchat because i don't need one Whoa. oh <coughs> oh snap i call that to spit in the alcohol bottle yeah, because he's drinking now. Hey, guys, he turned 21. In January. But yeah, yeah, he did. So I'm like he's 21 drinking, and a half now. He's drinking a beer per night now. And hard cider. Welcome to the uh, 21 Club, my bro. Yo, thanks, man. I appreciate yeah, it. I feel welcome. great. It's great to be a mate. Yeah. I mean, I, I was 21 for a... Uh, a year. And a half now. You're not 21 anymore. No, I'm not. I'm 22. Right. So I've been <laughs> legally able to drink for a year and a half. Wow, and that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's I've nothing witnessed, really. I mean, I've once, witnessed it once. Once it's lawful, it's it kind of loses its spark, you know? When, eh, that's you're what like, I hear. If you're like 18 and you drink, it's kind of like, oh, I'm a rebel. I can drink whatever I want. But like now you're 21, you, you can drink with a cop sitting in front of you. And it's like, well, what's the point? I mean, if the cops in your house, yeah. But if the cops, the if cops it's at in the bar, public, or the or in the bar, if you're in public, then you might be kind of screwed. I mean, if you're in public as well, it's okay. Eh, just, public intoxication can get you arrested. That's not public intoxication. If you're well, just drinking one beer, and if you're behind the wheel, then that's a different story. But yeah, don't don't get behind the wheel, bro. Uh, no, especially not. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, so well, Slim, uh, yeah. tell us about your Fender these days. Oh, my Fender. Well, guys, just so you know, I have a guitar for, I uh... I can't believe it! Like, two years, and I finally am able... I'm finally trying to, uh, learn how to play guitar. All I know is how to strum it, and that's it. Yeah. I'm stuck on frets. Frets are, a a big... Big step? Big step and very extremely hard. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, if you are like me and you play guitar regularly, I'm sure you will be laughing hard. Oh, what a noob! But, I mean, we all gotta start somewhere. I got this one song that I play, and it's called the, uh... Well, it's oh, called... Yeah. <clears throat> hey now, hey now! It's called the, uh, the liberal song, because... <laughs> because, because it's so because or no it's the, called the hippie song it's not the liberal song it's oh that's what you more po it. more politically correct yes Fair it, it's, it's it's just like strumming and it's like hey now oh wait let me play it for you it's it's like, right, keep, it right green, keep it green keep it green no that's not how it goes i want to i gotta record this 
It's done. We are. It's on the podcast. I need a personal D, D, D podcast. You're listening to it here now for the first time ever. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the hippie song. Well, I say hey now, hey now, hey now. Love everything and keep it green. Keep it green. We're going to make a new country. And that's it. Oh, that was so sweet. I know, right? Yeah, for real, dude. <clears throat> but yeah, so I deleted Snapchat. Yeah, he sure I, did. I, I'm actually... Whoa, a millennial deleting Snapchat? How can he do this? Well, I'll tell you why. Because as with most millennials, I was uh, getting too obsessed with it. And I caught it. You know, I think actually we're considered Generation Z. Well, millennials are like the people that are like 29, 30, 28, 31, like that range. Whatever. I used to think it was the other way around, too. We're also not considered 90s kids, even though we were born in 1997 and 1998. Yeah, I know. I I actually remember something from the 90s. I remember a lot from the 90s. I remember the toys... The Toys R Us commercials. I remember I want to grow up, I want to be a Toys R Us kid. That commercial. Huh. But then they were growing up and they're like still Toys R Us kids when they're like 30 or something. It was hilarious. No, Toys R Us is just gone. They just there, said bye. There, are, there are no Toys R Us kids anymore. They're all homeless. Now it's a Amazon kids. I don't want to grow, grow up. up. I'm, I'm an Amazon Amazon.com kid. Com kid. Then you know again, everyone's the Amazon.com You kid. know what's even funnier is that Amazon and Toys R Us used to partner with each other. Did you know that? You know what's also funny? What? Amazon used to be a bookstore. Yeah. That's it, where it, it all used, started. It used to be a, uh, it was an online, online, bookstore, yep. an online bookstore from out of uh, Jeff Bezos' garage. And Toys R Us partnered with Amazon to sell a uh, Toys. Their toys through their online marketplace. Yeah. I have fond memories of using Amazon's Toys R Us thing. No, well, I don't because I didn't have the computer. Well, you thing. missed out on dial up that was like. <laughs> 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 Hashtag STEM yeah. talk. STEM talk. Hashtag STEM talk. That is my performance of two modems communicating with each other. Hashtag STEM talk. Yeah. Science, technology, engineering, mathematics for life, guys. Whoa! That was like totally amaze balls. Anyway. Yes. It's not even the good science either, like environmental science. It's just crappy science, like chemistry. Ah. Chemistry. Get that uh, boron. Boring ass boron. Boring ass boron. Oh! Hashtag boring ass boron. Uh, Anyway. So, let's talk about experiences. Sure thing. My week, or... uh, We haven't had too much experiences. We've gone to uh, Universal on spring break. We did. And now we're in the good old Panama City Beach. We we have not gone out on the beach at all. No, because I've been... too busy with like schoolwork and, and crap. watching Family Guy for a solid hour. Yeah, or no, it's been like two hours. Oh my god! I've had I've had to watch it in order to study. That's how I study. And it's I watching stuff. To, I ended up taking a very mild nap after all. Yeah, apparently this this kid thinks I take naps all the time. So and I took one myself. And he dared me not to take a nap. He's actually made it through the day I actually made it through the day napless. I'm so proud. I dared him not to uh, have any accents or any noxious talks and And he didn't really succeed. No, he didn't. But to make up for it, I gently or semi-gently slap my face every time I do it. I've slapped myself a lot. I'm probably not done. Yeah. It's his face is red now. Yeah, it's got some blistering on it. Yeah, some, uh, it does. I had to slap scars. him a couple times too. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was rough. Yeah, he was took rough. me down in the boxing ring actually. Well, at least you you don't have that Canadian accent. Yeah, you're right. Which, by the way, I've 
a feeling we need to talk about this because you sure. think the Midwestern. I got some uh, Midwestern talk in me. It's not like the Canadian accent, but I mean, it sounds like American it's very, Midwestern. It's very similar, though. It's a little similar, but not. I can tell the difference. Apparently, what I've heard from actual Canadians is that the Canadian like. Um, stereotypical accent actually comes from Newfoundland. Okay. And everywhere else in Canada is apparently different. Hmm. Like, they actually talk like not like that, like a boot. That's only found in Newfoundland. I've heard a. I knew a Canadian and she did say a boot. A boot. It was a. Like, some <clears throat> girl's mom that went to Lakeview and she was like the leader of this uh, gardening club we had. I forget what it was called, but it was, it was fun. Dirt dirt dogs or something like that. Dirt dogs. I think that's what we called it. You know what? <clears throat> let's, uh, let's, uh, let's discuss this right now. Like, let's discuss Midwestern <laughs> words and phrases. Alright, let's do it. What, uh, what do you think Midwesterns say? And I'll tell you. Uh, they don't can. say y'all. I know no, that. They don't say y'all. Y'all is not a phrase. And when y'all is pronounced by the Midwesterners in a stereotypical sense, it's y'all. You know what I discovered as what, well? What did you discover? Y'all. Y'all. Is very forced down here. It's like. It's not. I've heard you, I've heard it would you said, say it is forced? No, I've heard it said by many people down here and whenever people say it, a lot of times it's forced. Like if, I hear it If they say it and it's forced and they're not from here. I hear it a lot from uh the place where I work and like they're probably not from here. No, they're they're they were, they, were, they were born from they were born in here. They were born here. Not. And uh a lot of it is very forced. I, I don't understand. I don't like that. They need to go back up north. Where are they from? North. Up north to all uh, Minnesota. Or, uh, Which, by the way, Maryland. Or no, not Which, by Maryland, the way, uh, Midwesterns, Midwesterners do not say that. North. North? I, no, that's Especially more of not a... Not in Michigan, actually. But Well, not Michigan. That's more of a Maine kind of thing. <clears throat> Maine kind of thing? Yeah. Stephen King. Oh uh, yes, Dairy Main. Yeah. Which speaking of which, let's talk about him. Alright. This is gonna be our uh segment we're gonna call Best and Worst. Alrighty. We're gonna talk about the best and worst movies of uh Stephen King, at least I am. What? Alright, fine. <clears throat> well yeah, Stephen King. Alright. What will be your best and worst, my bro? Since we're starting this out, <clears throat> I we're pretty much the rules are being followed, being like written up as it we go along. We're, yeah, much. we're kind of doing this on the fly. Yeah, we're kind of winging this. I'm gonna just, talk it, about just not what I wanted to do, but whatever. So, hey man, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta so, do. Sometimes it's just you know a winging a prayer. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the uh, for tonight. I'm gonna go with the. Uh, the best guitar amp I've ever owned and the worst guitar amp I've ever owned. <clears throat> All right. Well, boneless. It's very personal. And, it uh, is. For guitar enthusiasts. So yes. There we go. Uh, please just, it will it'll help you out in your guitar journey. Yes. <clears throat> so now, Stephen, tell us about Steve. Steve King. Steve K. Steve K. Uh, gosh, where to begin? Well, first of all, I think I had a dream like this once. I, I you have swear. A lot of dreams like this once. I have, <laughs> I have terrible deja vu. It's it's notice. I've it's noticed not that. even. It's not even funny. No, it's not like, really. I I swear I had a dream like this once. Where this is gonna get blocked on YouTube. I can just tell right now. I had a dream where this we had talked about Stephen King. We blocked on YouTube. Anyway, right. YouTube, please don't block this. Thank you. Don't let my dream come true. Anyway. Exactly. So, Steve King did a lot of drugs back in his early days of writing. He's one of the, uh, 
He's not one of my personal heroes, but I admire him simply because he writes, like, longer than the Bible books. And yep. yet, and yet, he publishes, like, a book. He publishes, like, five books a year. It's like which it. is, the Bible is the bar, so is it Bible plus pages or Bible minus pages? Oh, it's Bible plus pages. Especially I mean, have you the read, Book of Wise. Have you read the Book of Wise? It, like, I've Stephen never read Kinsley. it. It is not something I will probably ever read, but it, it's a great story. It is like 1,200 pages long. If you think I could sit there and read a fictional book for that long, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could barely read a book. For that long, I mean, if, if I'm you, still reading it. It is so well, incredibly I long. You had it as an audiobook. I do as well. I, re in order to uh, keep, in order to like keep my attention from leaving the page, I have to listen to the audiobook and read the book at the same time. Oh, you go back and forth. No, I oh, go. Do I it, do it the same oh, time. Oh wow! Unless you're in the car, I hope. Eh, sometimes. Well, not driving. Ah, okay. But whatever. Cool. So, and the audiobook, it's like 33 hours long. Or like... It's, there's also, like, there's like this... all Another audiobook called, like, from the... It's like the... The Bible. Read by, like, famous Hollywood people or whatever Please from Audible. Me. Morgan Freeman is reading the Bible. I think he's in there somewhere. Oh, man, I anyway. want to hear that. This could that be epic. Anyway, that's like 43 hours long, so it's not that far off. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, that's so... Amazing. I admire him because he writes like five books... He posts like five books a month, whereas George R. R. Martin, he writes good stuff, but he writes so incredibly long... It takes forever for him to write. He's probably going to die before, like, Game of Thrones gets finished. And he writes it on, like, a, not a vintage computer from the 80s. Of course he does. That's probably why it takes so long. Could be. He probably, probably writes on floppy disks. I yeah, mean, well, I mean, yeah. I mean... They, there's no CDs <clears throat> or USB drive back then. Actually, uh... I actually, uh... Watched a, uh... Interview... That had both Stephen King and George R. R. Martin talking, and George R. R. Martin asked Stephen King how the hell he wrote so much mm -hmm. and published so much. Wow! And <clears throat> Steve said he wrote he wrote six pages per day minimum, and of course stuff happens or whatever life happens, but oh well, yeah, he tries his best to write six pages a day. <clears throat> Whereas George R. R. Martin's like he writes a sentence like a day and like ponders over it like for three more days or whatever and then <laughs> it's like okay this is a good sentence I'll move on to the next one that's oh my gosh anyway so <clears throat> I'm going to George R. R. Martin for a long long time but we're not going to oh thank God uh yeah yeah anyway so let's see which one books or movies you take your pick books or movies. Books or movies based on Stephen King works. Or uh, Stephen King books. Well, oh. Because I've actually listened to a lot. Of I've King only books. read one Stephen King book from start to finish, and that would be The Mist. And that's only because I had to read a book over the summer by force. <laughs> or a middle school English or something. And no one was like, ah, son. I just was like, well, might as well read something by him that's probably good. Ah, son. And it was good. It you, was a novella, read, though. You read, you read that novella, my son? Son? Working on it there, Deborah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, you pick books or movies. I guess movies are easier to sit through, so movies. Okay. Uh, Let's discuss movies. Well, my favorite Stephen King movie, probably, there's two. Well, well there's, it's difficult. <laughs> That's difficult. Because there's some cult favorites, like Stephen King's It, 
You mean the the old one? The miniseries, or oh, and Why? the and the uh, new, the new movie, which is even better than the old than that it's one. Far better. <laughs> or and there's like a. Uh, actual good cinema movies like The Shining. You call it the Why is a bad movie? I'm not calling it a bad movie. I'm just saying, Oscar winning movies. Oh, I see. Fair enough. Movies that could win awards. Not like, uh, there's like pulp, there's like popcorn level good. Popcorn level? And then what, like? There's entertaining. Same dinner level good? There's, there's entertaining good, and then there's like, which is movies, like Avengers and whatever. And then there's film, like Call Me By Your Name, or Moonlight, or La La Land, or a lot of other Stephen King, or a lot of Stephen King movies, like The Shining, which is a popular Stanley Kubrick horror movie. That's or, right here. Or, uh, The Shawshank Redemption. Or movies like that, you know? <clears throat> so, All right. if I had to pick one, I would probably have to pick maybe, uh, I would have to pick the, uh, dang, this is tougher than I thought. All right, well, I'll go with the Shawshank Redemption with the caveat of Runners Up being, uh, it, 2017 version, which is just hilariously, just hilarious. It's not even, it's not even that scary, it's just polar hilarious how scary it is. It is. And, uh, Misery. Okay, there we go. Misery was actually a really good movie. And won Stephen, won, uh, it won uh, Dorothy Bates an Oscar. The only one out of a Stephen King movie to, uh, actually get an Oscar. Huh. A lot of Stephen King movies were nominated for Oscars, but she actually won one. Interesting. <clears throat> anyway, so... Misery is a great one. Shosh, like the uh, eight twenty nineteen 2019 is a great one. 2017. But 2017, you're right. It, uh, it Chapter 2 comes out this year. It does. Which I'm excited. Me, I'm excited too. It's going to be a great movie. But oh, yes. The Shawshank Redemption is probably one of my favorite movies of his. Why? Because it's a cinematic masterpiece. It's a man. It is a man's movie, which, come, which, uh, let it be known. Just because it's a man's movie doesn't mean women can't watch it. But it, it resonates more with men than it does with women. Like for instance, I don't know, A League of Their Own. I like watching it, but it resonates more toward women. Like The Notebook. And The Notebook. I which like watch. Is, I like watching The Notebook, but oh, it resonates more. What you do. It resonates more toward... You like watching The Notebook there? Yeah, I do. You like, a, oh my god, that's so sweet at the end. It is. Cry, it, it, it does make me cry. It's I so sad. But, in, latte. but anyway, The Shawshank Redemption is a man's movie. Why? Sure. It's got Morgan Freeman in it. Morgan Freeman? Yeah, he is in it. Yeah. More... Morgan, any, yes, he did slap himself, ladies and gentlemen. It was worth the slap. Anyway, anyway, yeah, so Morgan Freeman's in this, and it's a story about this guy who's been false, kind of falsely accused for murder, who no one knows. He murdered his wife and her lover, and they were, like, cheating on him. And he was sentenced to uh, two consecutive life sentences in the Shawshank prison in, what do you know, Maine, Wow. Of course it's in Maine. I mean, where else would it be? Georgia? Huh. huh. Well, yeah, right. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, The Shining takes place in Colorado, but I mean, you know. Oh my god, it's it's not Maine for once? It, yeah, it's not Maine. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. I don't know why, but whatever. Anyway, so... It's all cool. about him being in jail... His uh, experiences in jail, it's actually, it's very heartwarming actually, kind of funny. Hmm. Some things get really dark really fast, like he gets raped, and they don't, don't shy away from the rape. Okay. Gets raped in prison. 
He, uh... That's common in real life, unfortunately. Yeah, but... And it shows it. It's real life. It's It shows a lot of real life. I'm glad he touched on the subject. He spends 20 years in prison. All, like, uh... Being friends with Morgan Freeman and all that. And all of a sudden, yeah. like, this kid he was mentoring and trying to change... Gets killed by the uh, police commissioner. And... All of a sudden, he decides, you know what? It's time to get out of this hell hole. So, spoiler alert, he gets out. Nice. And once he gets out, it is cinematic. Gold. Cin- yeah, it's gold. Okay, the you music. Mean, your penis got hard. I, no, I don't. My penis does not get hard. It only gets hard for women. But anyway. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, it was that good. Yeah, so, I mean, it is that good, but it just doesn't get hard. That. Anyway, Alrighty. anyway, so the cinematic necessities of this movie really? resonates that big. Okay, the twist is simply wonderful. Okay, the music is great, the acting is fantastic. Morgan Freeman does his Morgan Freeman does his Morgan Freemanness. He should have won an Oscar for this thing. He should have. Yeah. And he meets up with uh, Morgan Freeman, gets out of jail, and meets up with uh, the guy at the end, and it's just awesome. Yeah, that does sound like a good movie. I'll have to check it out one day. Yeah. Well, you're, you'll you probably hate it, because it's like, I don't know, two and a half hours long. Oh, so. no. Oh, no. Oh, uh, never mind. <clears throat> However, it's two and a half hours of solid gold. Fair enough. If it's I, uh, anything like Endgame, then it might be tolerable. I, I don't know about that, but it's whatever. Okay. It's a different kind of end game level. I mean, the first time I watched it, I was like, what the heck? What, what's the deal with this? It's like two yeah. hours. I got to the two hour mark and I was like, what the heck? Why does everyone say this is a masterpiece? This is like pretty slow and it's not interesting mm-hmm. and he's not getting out of jail. I thought he gets out of jail. What's the deal? Then at the 15 minute mark, everything just, just goes 180. I'm like, oh my gosh, he got out. He did. And it made it made a lot of sense. And you can watch it, know he get knows how he does it, and it's still a good movie. That's the that's the thing about movie twists. That's you know? right. No, it's my turn. No, it's not yes. your turn yet. I'm still talking about this. I talk too long. I, no, I didn't talk too long. I, I'm still talking. So that was the thing about movie twists. The best ones, you can watch the movie again, and the movie does not change. Yeah. Well yeah. said, man. Well said, yeah. And now it's the Hentrex turn. You know. Because you're, like, overreacting about it. Well, I really was. Duh. Movies. I can't talk about them. I don't want to talk about movies. You always want to talk about No, I was going to talk about my favorite Stephen King movie. Oh, you were? Yeah. That's... You said you were going to talk about your favorite guitar amps. All right. Well, or I you, thought we you, were going to do it where you well, can talk about you, you can talk about Stephen King too. Yeah, it doesn't never mind. Matter. Uh, I definitely won't. I, that's a good point because you you won't know anything about guitar amps. I have a feeling. At least well, not I, that I know of. Well, I know about some. So uh, go ahead. Oh, okay. Well then, yeah. challenge accepted. Yeah, challenge accepted. Go so, ahead. So before I begin about guitar amps, uh. My favorite Stephen King movie is It 2017 Part 1 because between that and The Wise from 1990 and The Langoliers, like at least the first half of it or whatever, that is by far the best <laughs> because The Langoliers just made me annoyed feeling and I don't know why. And <laughs> The the OG Wise in the nineties was boring as hell, except yeah, for was, when the Wise showed up, which was barely any. But when he was there, it was comedic gold. It was. Yeah. When he was gone, it was like, oh my god, boring, these boring as hell. middle-aged people from the nineties do nineties things. Yes, like break John, John Boy Walton. I mean, well, it wasn't far enough in the nineties to break dance quite yet. Yeah. A little bit was there, but... John Boy Walton with his, uh... Ponytail. Right. I mean, my gosh. Oh, yeah! He was the author. 
He was the author. And they were all in May, of course. But yeah, uh, I really like the special effects. I like when the Wise pops out in the stage in the sewer, and the the carnival. Are you music's... still talking about? Are you still talking about the uh, two twenty seventeen yes. version? Yes. Oh, okay, good. There's no <laughs> carnival cart train car in the sewer or stage in the OG one. Yeah, and but in the new one there is, and he pops out, and it's like. And then the wise makes this hilarious face and starts like Russian dancing or something. <laughs> and uh, the first time and I saw this, I almost cried. Yeah, it was it was it amazing. Was beautiful. And and it actually shows the kids floating. Yes, they actually they, float down there's, there. There's actually <laughs> there's actually a connection between floating and him saying floating and actually floating like in the, the original one he's like they all flow down here even though you never see the floating where do they float where's the floating like it never happens no never happens so i mean one day i might try to read the book but I don't that's, know if that's going to happen. It's a tough read, let me tell you. It, it's hard enough. For, uh, I can sometimes read books if they're really funny, but that's about it. That or if they're it's, factual. It's not yeah. quite that funny. Like, uh, in the book, Pennywise is more of a... Not really funny, more kind of an ominous presence. Ah. Uh. He's not... He doesn't have quite the humor. Ah. Uh, moments. How is he portrayed in the audiobook? In the audiobook? He's I mean. He's told me it's not some guy reading it who did a shitty job. I mean, he does the accent, he, he does the impression. Like. Is it funny? Kinda, but it's. But the words, it's kind of. Uh, I don't know. It's. Like in the movies. He's hilarious, but in the book, he's kind of, you don't, you can't, it, you can't tell whether or not it's supposed to be hilarious or scary, you know? It's like yeah. that line between you don't really know what to feel. Oh, but in, I see. But in the movies, he's hilarious, and he's trying to be scary. That's true. But yeah. Well, that's all I but, got. But I agree with you. It is a, uh... It's a good one. It's a pretty good movie. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Very good popcorn movie. I yes, really, really liked it. Very good popcorn. Maybe not steak dinner, but popcorn. No. And now, guitar amp time. Alright, bye. Cool. So, alright guys. So, my favorite guitar amp is gonna be shared after I talk about the worst one, actually, because... Let's save the best for last. Uh, no, let's talk about the best one, because we'll go in order. Fair enough. All right, fine. I'll save the worst for last. But uh, the best guitar amp I ever owned is the one I own currently. And that would be the Marshall Studio Vintage 20-watt head that came out, I think, in February of this year. So, for those of you that don't know about it, uh, Marshall released these uh, quieter versions of some of their most famous amps from the 70s and the 80s. Like, uh, there's a tw they're all 20 watts, and they can be attenuated down to 5 watts, which is usually what I use, and that's still very loud for whatever reason. But uh, they have... The 1959 Super Lee Plexi, so if you hear people talk about, oh man, it's that classic Plexi tone, that's what it is. That's the Plexi. And then there's the JCM 800, which is, I think is based off the 2203, which is before they added the diode clipping. And then that's a classic amp for like any kind of, you know, glam rock hair metal from the 80s uh some early metallica early uh, uh i don't think guns and roses used it maybe a little bit uh speaking of guns and roses the third amp they released was 
the Silver Jubilee, which is the amp that Guns N' Roses used. Hashtag Slash with his top hat. And the one I have is the Plexi one because I love ACDC so much that it's kind of scary. And I can plug! Exactly. And I play that one all the time. I play, and I've been getting into Led Zeppelin more recently, though. Trying to See, nail it. Led Zeppelin doesn't hit the sack, though. But you know, you're, you, they, you're allowed to be back, ACDC. Uh, yeah, they, uh, Jimmy Page did not hit the sack, neither did Robert Plant. But Got loose from the noose. They, they did not get loose from the noose uh, that had them hanging about. So, uh, yeah, it's a great amp. It's very loud, a very loud 5-watt amp. To put it into perspective, the amp I had before that was the DSL40CR, which is also a Marshall. And it was very loud. I mean, it's 40 watts. I get this Studio Vintage Plexi head. It, it's attenuated. It's not even the 20-watt mode on 5 watts. It's as loud as this 40 watt amp I had. So what's the uh you put it on 20 watt mode, it hurts your ears. So what's the what's your favorite one that you own? Because you talked about like five already. I'm I'm yeah, giving some cool. context. Like I just said. The one my favorite one is the current one that I own, and that is the Studio Vintage SV20H. It is the Plexi. That's the one that was used in the Back in Black album and all kind of stuff. And I'll end it there. I could talk about that bad boy for hours. Well, but well let's do it. Talk about why it's your favorite. Fair enough. Yeah. All right, well. Uh, this is an open discussion. You it's actually really, you know what good point. Yeah, this is open discussion. <laughs> well, you, you, you've been going, warned. Yeah, go ahead, do it. Like I talk a lot about movies. You sure did. And, and I do. will continue to do. And you will. So. You'll continue to talk about this. All right. And uh, to get that back in black tone, you know, you got to pair that amp up with the 4x12 uh, 1960B cabinet. And ideally, you want the Celestian G12-65s in there. But those are pricey. And the speaker cabinet usually doesn't come with those unless you get a vintage one but then you gotta spend a little more money just because it's vintage and collectible but i play guitar more for uh the tone and for the playing not as much the collectability and you know aside from that you know it's a classic amplifier that you know decades of musicians love and adore and I love it just as much and I didn't even grow up in that era and we'll just end it with uh, knowing that yes it's expensive it was a uh, 1300 bucks and that's not including the speaker cabinet which I bought used for 400 so seventeen hundred dollars at that point plus tax and that's a lot of money for a guitar amp setup but i will have to say it was well worth saving up the money and i would if i had to do it all over again i would still buy it every time i play that thing it puts a big smile on my face and i feel i feel very deeply connected with my music. When, I, when I'm playing my Gibson SG standard through this Marshall amp that I spent 1700 bucks on, it really just, it, it brings my spirit to a whole nother realm of the universe of music. And it, it makes me feel so good. So good! Well, I got you! Just like ah. drugs! And uh, now, let's talk about- Cocaine! Let's talk about the worst amp I ever owned. Uh, no, let's talk about movie, because... What? In order. Yes. What? Uh, what? Relax. Yeah, you and your, uh, your alcoholness, alcohol state. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fair enough. I guess you're right. We didn't talk about bad movies. So, what's no. the, the worst Stephen King movie to you? Well, 
There is a lot. I know of my least favorite. <laughs> the Langoliers was kind of hilarious, but <laughs> more more consistently <clears throat> more consistently hilarious than it in nineteen ninety. I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> but but there have been a uh, been a lot of terrible Stephen King movies. Oh yes. There have been Sleepwalkers, which is hilarious. There's been but uh I think the worst one would probably have to be Dreamcatcher. Ah uh, yes. You know what Dreamcatcher is? No. No, not one bit, oh, but gosh. I'm gonna agree with you. It is incredibly incredibly dull and boring. Oh. The young Morgan Freeman, okay, he's got like these very long caterpillar like eyebrows. <laughs> and he there it's about this like these aliens that come out of the toilet. And what? they literally call them like shit weasels. Morgan Freeman calls them shit weasels. They're gold shit weasels. Yeah, pretty much. And uh it's that's it's it. trash. That I mean yeah, that's it. The it only is. That, that's the only funny part. Morgan Freeman with his caterpillar eyebrows and shit weasels. Otherwise, it's just boringness. It takes place in this like log cabin with these very dull characters. And nothing happens except like all this um bull I know, it is a bunch of BS that happened in that movie. And I mean, Stephen King wrote this book, like, right after, I guess, his almost fatal car crash. Which is, I guess, okay, whatever. I, I don't understand. I never read the book. All I watched is this movie, and this movie sucks. It's dull and boring. There's, like, this British guy that's kind of funny, but doesn't get quite up to, like, I don't know, Tim Curry as Pennywise levels. Huh. And Tim Curry-wise. It's all about, like, the mind and all that. Like, the yeah. shit weasels were kind of, like, going through, like, his body and, like, yeah. trying to enter his mind. It's just, it's really weird. And it doesn't explain a whole lot. And it's just boring and that's the worst crime a movie can commit is boringness i mean at least the langoliers had that crazy guy that was like screaming all the time huh it's like screaming all the time and uh yeah you, you're looking at shit wheels whistles now it's i, I wonder what that looks like now yeah. i found it, it's hilarious it looks like newt gingrich maybe <laughs> i don't know just Anyway. I am pooping, and I thought everybody should know. That's not Newt Gingrich. I don't know yeah, who that is. I don't know who that is either. But anyway, so, I mean, that's it. I really can't talk about this any further, except, I don't know, the snow looked real, I guess. Uh, that, that's a good thing. And, uh, yeah. I, t I can't say anything more, except uh, the movie was boring as hell, and I hated it. I mean, at least the Langoliers was so bad it's good. This one's so bad it's bad. Well, I'll take your word for it. And it, not, not, 1990, I mean, that was boring and long as hell, but at least it had Pennywise. This just has Morgan Freeman with his caterpillar eyebrows and shit weasels, and that's it. I mean, and that's barely anything in this hour and a half long movie i mean what, what else can you say about it it's just terrible anyway cool yeah it's a lot shorter than a uh, shawshank redemption because i could talk about that you sure could for a lot longer but just the majesty of that movie and how great it is but uh i will okay. try to refrain from it Thank because God. the hint try even you though i let him go on and on about guitar amps shawshank redemption no anyway so now before we get to my least favorite, what is your favorite guitar amp? Because you've never spoke on that. 
My favorite guitar amp? Yeah. I, I, I well, gotta wonder. Here it comes. What's the one about... Uh, there was one that we went to. There's like this... Uh, this guitar... Um, store we went to in Auburn. Oh, the vintage one? There's Yeah, there's like this vintage oh, one. Oh, the Fender Twin Reverb? I think so. It was yeah, like the that, that was like it. 60s yeah, it was version. Yeah, Twin yeah. Silver Face. Is that one. You want to know why? Why? Because that's... That could be the same amp style slash model that Elvis could have used uh, and the Beach Boys and a lot of other people that I admire. And I don't know about actually, Elvis. Elvis... And he uh, could have. Maybe once. Maybe. That was a little late for Elvis. That was probably more... That was a late 60s, early 70s amp there. And Elvis played in the late 60s and early 70s. Yeah, he was in his fat days, but yeah. I mean, he was getting up there. Late 60s, he was still kind of thin. Oh. 1977 was when he was, like, super fat. But anyway. Oh, okay. Eating his fried peanut butter and banana sandwiches, you know what I mean? Anyway. Fair enough. Anyway, that amp... <clears throat> okay, gave us the sound of a generation. Okay, the Beatles probably played on it. They did actually. Well, there you they go. They may have used the black bass one, but they're more or less the same thing. Yeah, they. The Beatles music was sung through that. They didn't sing type of it. it. I mean, they played through that type of thing. That's more like it. Go, woo, get it right the first time. Yes. Anyway, that. A lot of a lot of great bands, Johnny Cash maybe. I don't know. A lot of a lot of the uh, pinnacles of music history mm -hmm. flowed through this type of amp. I agree. The Fender Twin is a very good. Uh, it's got an excellent built-in reverb, spring reverb tank. It's not emulated. It's actual Plus springs, this, and it sounds amazing. Yeah. Plus the style. Yes, the style of it is. It looks really good. This it looks I like. I want one. I want one too. It so looks bad. like, it looks like the sixties. Cause it's from the sixties. I mean, yeah. It looks like, the good part of the sixties, not like the drug Woodstock whatever, part of the sixties. Yeah. It looks like the, uh, stylized part of the sixties that I actually enjoy. I agree. And it's, a, it's part of Americana, if you will. It is. It's an American designed amp. Fender is an American company. Yeah. Uh, but do you know what a, you uh, know Americana is? Yes, I think we all do. Okay. Anyway, uh, I will add briefly that uh, the Fender Twin Reverb is extremely heavy and it can be extremely loud. I've never played it that loud, but I'm well aware how loud it can get. Uh. It I mean, yeah. stays very clean. It gives you a lot of headroom. You can turn it up loud and it won't distort like a lot of tube amps do. I mean, yeah, it's got to be very loud. You know why? Because they're playing concerts. Yeah, the Beatles, okay, screaming girls all day and night. They got to, like, play as loud as they can in order for them to... Oh, yeah. And uh, on top of that, it is amazing for surf. I mean, Dick Dale act didn't actually use that one, unfortunately, but... Um, there are, I'm sure there are some surf rock bands that did, I haven't looked into it. I have only looked into Dick Dale's setup, and I know for sure that he used the, uh, the Showman with an external reverb tank, but that's for another time. But yeah, uh... Your worst stamp. My worst stamp? Or your worst, uh, uh, first, my worst, uh... Stephen King movie. Stephen King movie is The Langoliers. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I would definitely watch the three-hour 1990-wise over The Langoliers any day. I mean, you watch, like, half of it. It's not even... I know, and it, it, I hated it that much. He even gets the best part. I couldn't. I couldn't take it. It was... Because that, that Italian-looking guy who's always pissed <laughs> off, he just... God, he was he, the best part. He was screaming so he, much. It was really hilarious. just made scaring me, the little girl. He, <laughs> he made me cringe so hard, and when because he reminded you him, he, he reminded you of you. Yes, 
But like I, just, I, always, I hate the feeling when I Bust feel like deck. I'm not trying hard enough. His dad's like, "You don't try hard enough, you suck." I was like, ah, 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 ah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not that mentally. Scary mentally little girl, a, lady. I'm not that a uh, mentally scarred per se, but I guess that's part of having ADHD. These are, but. They're Still. like cartoon characters. There's, they're just. I know. Well, they're not cartoon characters, but they're so. like cartoon characters. Oh, oh, you said like, okay. Yeah, they're gotcha. hilarious. Yes, yeah, I know they're not cartoon characters. I was gonna be like, like, what are you? Smoking? They're not animated. And they're not animated either. Oh Thank God, sorry. That's I'm not an animated. That's, <laughs> that's never talk for another day. Yes, but yeah, uh, I mean, at least the wise, you know. There's Tim Curry. It was hilarious enough that I even made a YouTube parody of it that there, has, like, at least thanks Tim to the new wise, it, it got up, it made, I don't know if it made it to 20,000. Yeah, it did. I think it did. It has at least 15,000 views. I know that. <coughs> if you want to see what I looked like in middle school, go on YouTube, type in Georgie Meets Pennywise, and look for the account jhend1000 and look for a chubby kid with braces in a swimming pool. 15,000 views in uh, eight years. Yeah. Wow. That's the view. The majority of those views were from that movie that yeah. came out in 2017. So you had to wait like, I don't even know, seven years. Yeah, because the hype built up. I knew it would happen. When I Dude. saw they were making that, I knew people would start watching it. But anyway, yeah, Langoliers, I, I, maybe it was because I just really didn't want to watch a movie that night. Maybe I was pissed about a certain unnamed girl that I'm not going to talk about, but you know who it is. Yeah, uh, I think we all know who it is. Probably not. Could have been the combo of things, but... It's just that everything. Just, it was oh, man well, I'll tell you what though the best part was uh, yet to be uncovered you're watching half gosh like half of it it was getting close there's all there's like that it's like that uh Star Trek guy like Captain Kirk guy they talked like Captain Kirk William Shatner that was hilarious I believe the answer to our question is this wait William Shatner appears a William Shatner impersonator yeah he, he was like pausing his like pausing his words sentences like every single time it was hilarious well, I might have to re to finish it at plus some the, point plus but... there's the quote unquote blind girl that is just a terrible actress yeah, I remember that. And I didn't like a, that either. That's like a guy's haircut, too. Was... I remember there was like a, a gothic chick or something, like a skater girl kind of girl who smoked cigarettes who was kind of attractive, but not enough for me. But... Oh, yeah, the far out girl. Yeah. And the younger kid on there, I mean, I knew they were going to engage in some very low level mating behaviors of some sort. And. <laughs> They did. The unexplained psychic child of the blind girl. And then her, yeah. That was kind of hilarious. But, uh, yeah, that would be my least favorite. Alright, well, I can see why, but I don't, I don't agree because it's just, I've seen the entire thing. It's hilarious. Alright. But I, I would understand why you would pick that as your least favorite. Indeed. Now onto your worst amp. Oh boy, my least favorite guitar amp that I've owned <coughs> is going to be the first one I owned, and the one that Slam probably remembers me playing and probably made him cringe every time he heard it, because it actually sounded that bad. On top of my bad playing from when I was starting out, not only was my playing bad, the amp was horrible sounding that made it even worse and that would be the Fender Frontman 15 
it I only bought it just because I, that was like the only amp I could afford at the time. I just wanted to have the guitar and an amplifier. And I couldn't afford a decent amplifier yet, so I figured, eh, at least I can play through it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it gets the job done. You can, you can play through it. It's not going to be pretty. Uh, it, it's very, it kind of has a very thin, uh, kind of grainy sound almost. It's the best way I could, like, fizzy. It's hard to describe sounds with words sometimes, but that's the best way I could put it. It, it was just not pleasing. Like, when you think of rock music and you, you think of, like, the amp I have now and you hear, like, it's like, yeah, boy. But, no, this amp, it was like, it's like, ah, oh, God. Oh, at least I played it. And poor Slam's just like, oh, make it stop. Anyway. That's probably my least favorite, too. I don't sleep. Because. Really? Yeah, because, uh, huh. pretty much any amp I had to hear at the Sherm kind of sucked because you played it all yeah. the freaking time. That one was a midge. Now, to be fair, the amp I had but after it, that was it, a step up, it, a big step up. But it paints it like a normal. It, it, and it did paint like a normal. And it played like a normal. But it sounded like a midge. But that first Marshall that I had, it, I mean, people hate on the code series i like them all right they're good for the money i mean it's never gonna sound like what it's trying to emulate but it's it's closer than you think but yeah my least favorite has got to be for that matter any of the cheapo uh starter pack style uh fender solid state amps they just are horrible god they're horrible Oh my god, they sound so bad. That's why it was, like, I gave, like, 25 bucks for it. You know how <laughs> shitty this thing is? It's so shitty that I bought it for 25 bucks at Guitar Center, and when I traded it into a different music store to get my other amp, I made money off of it. It's that bad, and that was a trade-in value. It's not like that was what they're gonna sell it for either they gave me i made like 10 bucks off of it without even trying to so it's it was not good so uh yeah would you say that's your least favorite or you got another one that you happen to know of for whatever reason well basically all the ones that i had to hear at the sherm kind of sucked but I would, I, if that was the first one, I mean, it didn't sound all that great, honestly. It really didn't. I would agree with you there, but then again, hearing it all the time with the Sherm, kind of a... Yeah, I'm sure that gets old. It gets old after a while. So Especially when it's not necessarily good playing. Uh, yeah. If the playing's decent, maybe it's a bit more tolerable, but... If it's not good, I totally get why that would be obnoxious. Yeah, it's obnoxious now. Oh, oh it's not roast. Uh, on roast. Oh, raw meat. And yeah. <laughs> and now <laughs> we're yeah, yeah. talking about the best and the worst. We're going to talk about a new segment, which we both enjoy. Pretty much equally. And this is the subject of each podcast, I suppose. And tonight's subject is... No, this is... Okay. This is something... I was this, wrong. You were wrong. We talked about this earlier. The intro didn't... I just, didn't, just uh, forgot. My apologies. It's all good. So, during the podcast, we're going to uh, be talking about theme park and theme park related uh, things. Because this is going to be our theme park reviews. Yes. I guess. Theme park ride reviews. 
For now, at least. For now, at least. We're going to try this out and see if it works. If it doesn't stick, then we'll probably do something else. But this is where it's going to stay for now, at least. See if it sticks. Throw, right. it, throw it at the wall. See if it sticks. Right. If it slides off, it's a red X. If it sticks, it's a green check. There you go. So, theme park attractions. The hen dry actually uh, chose this one because we were both on it fairly recently during spring break and try why don't you uh discuss the name reveal the name of this ride the here. hollywood rip ride rocket at universal orlando or studios orlando not islands of adventure but the actual universal studios orlando park the old the first part not universal studios hollywood that's a different thing all that's a different area and I think there's a theme park there, too, but we won't get into that. No, because we haven't been to it. So, uh, yeah, you know, that is a really nice roller coaster. It's a little bit of a headbanger, but I've been on some that are far worse. It's not the smoothest one, but it's it's got a cool concept with it. I'll tell you what, it's the, uh, the one that they pretty much rolled out the red carpet for, because... Ev like everyone when we got on everyone wanted to be on it first of all second of all I mean, it's epic there's like all these tvs about it and all that stuff detailing all the rules and whatever oh yeah very long lines plus there were like escalators around no it was a like a moving like the the moving walkway or whatever but maybe they not, es not the escalators it was like it's not like the Walkings. moving walkway that they have in the, the Jetsons. The part that takes you from the parking lot to the, uh, to the parks, but it's it's, it's a little like that. It's kind of I don't know what you call that. It's like it you. It's the like the thing from the Jetsons. The the roller coaster train moves really slowly, but the platform moves with the coaster. Yeah, the platform or whatever. And you have to get into your car, and then the ride goes off on its own. Yeah, you gotta pick your own song, too. Which yeah, you pick your song from different genres. Which, was, by the way, that was didn't, really sick. it didn't have a whole lot of selection, though. That which, was, yeah, I will agree. I wish they had a slightly better selection. Uh, ACDC, where are you at? Yeah, and uh, I'll tell you something else. An iPod Shuffle. Which is like as big as your index finger, like look, like probably smaller than your a normal person's like, index do they finger. They even right? make those anymore. Yeah, they do. Oh, I, I, I didn't know one. that. I bought one recently, but anyway. Oh, it's, okay. It's literally a button with it's not a square like piece of equipment it's, that's as big as your pinky, right? And it mm. can house like at least 1500 songs on it and mm. they can't make a giant ass roller coaster that can hold like at least 30 i mean there's barely 30 songs on there it was that was atrocious there are secret songs on there i read you have to do some kind of code but i didn't remember it at the time plus you have to do it like super fast too yeah because once you're up you don't want to look well if you're slam at least you don't want yeah. to look now for me i looked every step of the way and i sang along to that's the way i, I, I like it and it was lit <laughs> i listened to a a country song i forgot which one but uh, it was a country song i think luke bryan said it, so. oh well so you start so, off then going straight up in the air, not on not an upward I, hill, which I hated. But oh you gosh. went straight up, man. Slam was. <laughs> I saw the making sky. Making China face so hard, you'd think he was Trump minus the yeah. hairstyle. Yeah, I mean, you saw the sky, and I was like, "Yes, holy crap! Why? I want to get off now." <laughs> I mean, we're just going straight up. I mean, it's like you're lying on your back. You look up at the sky. Same I, thing. I don't want to look at the sky. And once you look at the sky, going straight up, I'm like, well, crap. I'm going to die. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, you I, could. But especially yeah, when you hear hard. all these uh, theme park 
ride catastrophes. That's why forever. you get scared about this shit. Yes. Okay. <coughs> well, that's because it's at parks that don't do things correctly. Well, Universal most manages does, it yeah. well. Places <coughs> that you see on the media, they're a lot more low budget. And you gotta yeah. be careful about that stuff. That's true, but I mean, what uh, if... It's understandable. What if, uh, you know, this is the one day that a person slacks, you know? It's... I'm gonna just... Oh, it's always... Yeah. It's always in the back of my mind. And I'm like, crap, I'm gonna die. I'm, I'm just gonna make the conclusion that anxiety and roller coasters are enemies. Uh, you had to make that conclusion now? No, I made it probably the day you were at the park. I can't believe you had to even do that. It should, it should come across I to mean, you. It made sense, but it confirmed my suspicions. Let's put it that way. When I saw the Trump face appear. And I think all that, uh, uh, the Doctor Doom ride, you started, like, praying or something. I was like, slam. I didn't start praying. I, I thought you were like, pr- like, <laughs> I was like, slam, I swear. And then we went up and I, it was, <gasps> and then I was like, oh my god, it's Trump. Well, anyway, let's talk about. Yeah, some, back to the other ride. Yeah, this ride and not Doctor Doom. That's another ride from their time. Right. So we went up there, down we it went. Was, it was a lot of twists and turns, and a lot of flipping, and I did not like it. That and was the Linden's first uh, <laughs> upside down coaster, I think. It's was it? Probably it wasn't. It didn't go like all over the place. Yeah, like, that it's a longer one. It's a longer one. That's why I I opened my eyes a few times because I thought, oh hey, it's over. Oh wait, no, but it's not. You felt the brakes. You're like, yes, no, try to. And we just kept on going. China. And I was like, yes. And it, it's the song kind of helped, though. I, I, I yeah. gotta say, even though I couldn't really hear it because of the screaming and the uh, the wah wah to China wah. And, uh, <laughs> I was, I just always have a good time on that one. And it it goes fast and it's fun and it, it's really exciting. On that level, I'll give it to you. It was good, but for me, for you personally, yeah, personally, I was horrified out if, of my mind. If you're a roller coaster enthusiast, it's a good coaster. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I mean, I can give it to, like, roller coaster enthusiasts. The fact that, yeah, this is a, uh, this is a coaster that they would really enjoy. I did. But, yeah. But for me personally, it was very, very scary. I see. But then again, I actually had a fairly decent time on it. Looking back, I'm glad that I did it. But would I ever do it again? No. Oh, I, I was going to say, if you did, I'd be very proud. Yeah, but you should be proud that I did it at all. I know. Now we got to get you on the Hulk. Which is actually not as bad. You'd probably still say China when we launch through the, the launch tube. That one, it, it like, go, starts off normally. Yeah, I'm going to say this one thing, because it's relevant. You go up, and at least you're not going straight up, like on the Rip Ride Rocket, but instead, you launch, like, really fast. Suddenly, you're going, like... 50 miles an hour and it like propels you upwards and man I could just see that you, you probably at that point switch from China to my father gave me a small of the dollars <laughs> I'd just be like he, he said it he said it and then when we get off the ride your hair would be in the trunk parting <laughs> you'd have the the hair going across your forehead <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah, I'd say that's a good ride. I don't really have much else to say about it, but it's a classic. I mean, I would give it this, like, the actual designs of it was pretty good. The coaster itself, I mean, it was safer than I thought it was going to be, and... Technology yep. itself was actually pretty good. Wasn't it made in like 
the early 2000s? No, I got the early 2000s vibe. I'd say like 2012-ish, somewhere 2012? around. 2012? I remember when I rode on it, it was like brand, brand new-ish. Or it was only there for a year. Well, dang. First time I rode it. So it's within this current decade, but at the opposite end of the 2010s. Well, dang. Oh my god, we're almost to the 2020s. Uh, yeah, you just figured this out? No, but it just, god, when we talk about the 20s now, we're gonna have to be like, which 20s? The 1920s or the 2020s? We can't There's... just say back in the 20s anymore. There's different sayings for them, like, nine, you can't say the 10s, you know say the 2010s. People, people, people will say the 2020s, not the 20s. The <laughs> 20s will be the 1920s. I guess so. But anyway, to the coaster itself, I thought this was like a, the cartoons they were showing was like early 2000s cartoons, I thought. It did have the animation style, didn't it? Yeah, that was the weirdest thing. Maybe that was just for cost cutting. <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, oh, there's wait. other rides like what? I remember why it's like that. Why is it like it that? It kind of has an Adult Swim 2D uh, look oh. to it, except not Adult Swim, but it's got that vibe. Ah. Well, that, that makes a little that's the sense. best way I could put it, but it, it's kind of like that. Because I was going to say... It's an like, artistic style. Okay. It's not... Maybe it was also for cost-cutting, but I think they did it on purpose, too. All right. Well, I was going to say, because the mummy had, like, Brendan Fraser on it. That Harry the rights that, Harry... that, they didn't have to come up with it. Yeah. Oh, well, they came up with a little bit, but... Harry Potter had... Harry Potter rides had Harry Potter in it, so why can't they come up with this better thing? Well, Whatever. I mean, it wasn't based on the movie or a TV series. It was mm, oh well. new. Eh, so, I mean, the coaster itself was pretty nice, pretty well maintained. I had a thrill while I was on it, and I was glad to get off of it. I bet. They rolled out the red carpet for this too. It's like they're, it's like a gem, you would think. It's like a roller coaster gem. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, so I would give this overall for roller coaster enthusiasts, I would give it a 9.6 out of 10. But for me personally, probably a uh, 8.3. All right, that's that's respectable. Yes, especially for a uh, rap scouting like myself who is scared to death of uh, roller coasters. Anyway, hand dry. What would you give this rating? Uh, well, I'm not giving the rating a rating, but I'll give the ride a rating. Oh, well, okay. Whoa! I would give it a rating of... And explain why. You know, you're going to be shocked, but I think I'll give it probably an 8 out of 10. <laughs> your, your score was actually higher, which is impressive. Well, why? Why? Well, it is a really great ride. Don't get me wrong. I love the theme. I love hearing the music while you're on it, but... The, it's a little, the jerkiness factor is a little bit more than I like. It, it, it's not a smooth coaster. It, it left me with a little bit of a headache. And that's not. Well, that was because of all the uh, twists and turns and going upside down and whatever. Well, the Hulk doesn't give you a headache. It goes I upside don't... down a lot more. Oh, uh, well, never mind though. But, uh, it is short. It has more loops. The, this one has more like twists than loops, but uh, it's not my all-time favorite roller coaster, but definitely in my top five. If they would improve the smoothness and the ride quality, 
And if they would, and the other thing is the song selection kind of makes me sad a little bit. They have some good songs, but a lot of them, like, I've never heard of them before. Yeah, just so, hook up an iPod Shuffle. That or... I swear. Put just... stuff that's, like, pop culture <coughs> related. Like, if you put something like Back in Black on there, I mean, I'd pick that every time, obviously. Yeah, I if, mean, I... Or put a I Walk the Line. Or yes! A, like, Miserloo. Maybe, like, during the summer months, put surf music on there on purpose. I swear, just put Something good music. a little better than a... Get busy, child! I swear, you can put... That's a techno song. I swear, you can... Well, there's that character. I swear... I swear, you can, uh... You can have more songs... Than just 30. Why do you have just 30 songs? There might have been more than 30. And I bought Shuffle has 1,500 at least. Yeah. I and mean, yet, dang. I... The original iPod had 500 songs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this that thing, was a lot back then. It, it's a lot now. And this, especially for this roller coaster, which is like 30. What the heck? That That's an atrocious. Yeah, it is. You know, that, I mean... I, I can't I can't believe this. I mean, engineers built this thing. Engineers built the iPad iPod Shuffle. Just, but they're not the same engineers. <laughs> so, you could have had people that graduate <laughs> from Georgia Tech. No offense, Georgia Tech, but from the people I've seen come out of your school, it's not looking so good. Just because they can pass the test. Oh. A Georgia big Tech. burn, and I'll give him more burns. Yeah, well. Well, yeah, that's my take on it. Yeah. Coming to think of it, though, a lot of rides were shaky. I don't really notice the shakiness, but, you know, whatever. I mean, none of them are going to be, like, extremely smooth, but, you know... You notice it more on others than some. Like, that was one I remember noticing it on. But, like, the mummy, like, I didn't notice anything like that. I mean, it didn't... You weren't locked in with the headrest, though, where your head's, like, smacked. But, you know, even on the rides that go upside down where you have to have the headrest, I... That one's just on the jerkier side. Not at anywhere near as bad as the ninja at Six Flags Over Georgia. My god, I don't care how many talkies ads they put up to make it look pretty. It hurts your head. You're gonna need to see the chiropractor after that one. It's still fun in its own way. You just have to embrace it. That's all I gotta say. But yeah, that's all I got. And that's all I got. Well, guys, <coughs> we've had a uh, first, the first uh, new and improved podcast. Yes. Tell us if you like this or not. Hopefully, we'll, next time we might have uh, questions. I didn't prepare any questions, but this is normally the time where we take questions, I guess. But uh, we don't have any, and I didn't come up with any beforehand because I didn't think. I got a question. Oh, okay, let's. What? Question for our listeners: Do you prefer the East Coast or the West Coast, and why? Oh, uh, geography question. And that's it. Anyway, yeah, there we go. Question for you guys. And, and next time, ask we may even question. we may even have a theme song next time. Oh, uh, we have a theme song already. You just haven't heard it. All right. Oh, anyway. So for the next podcast, which will be up hopefully weekly or bi-weekly, or bi no, bi either weekly or bi-monthly. Weekly or bi-monthly. Every other week. I don't know what the correct term is, but anyway. Bi-weekly. Whatever. Anyway. <laughs> bi-monthly, that's every two months. Once every two months. No, we're not, well, no. <laughs> Oh, but any, anyway, hopefully this will do weekly or bi-weekly. And 
next podcast, we're going to talk about the, for my section, for best and worst, we're going to talk about the best and worst of the superhero movies. All right. Sounds like a plan, man. And for you, Hendry, what is the best and worst for the next podcast? Let's you? see. I really didn't think about that. Uh, I was thinking you would probably want to talk about vinyl, maybe. But Oh, uh, looking at your turntable that I'm trying to repair at the moment. Uh, oh, yeah. No, maybe in the future. Uh, I'll do something about uh, power tools, maybe. Something... <laughs> The best and worst power, best and worst power tools. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I could make this good, cause of just from being in an industrial environment, I guess. Ooh, okay. Well, the best and worst of superhero movies and power tools. Powers. Oh, they go hand in hand. Oh. <laughs> and for the uh, theme park attractions, we are going to talk about. Uh, Jurassic Park, the ride. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. So uh, get ready for that. You guys want to uh, experience Jurassic Park, the ride before we do? Then uh, go to Universal. And if you want to join us for the best and worst discussion and uh, just start watching your superhero movies or, uh, you know, use your power tools, I guess. Anyway. Thank you guys for a great podcast, and we hope to hear you later. All and, right. Uh, bye. Have a good one. Adios. Stuckman reference. <laughs>